everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video we're talking seasonal clothes storage. everyone's had a lovely week so far. I missed you guys last week because there was a mixture of things that kind of stood in my way of making a video. My cat was very shouty when I was trying to film and my upstairs neighbour is learning how to play medieval flute music and so if you can actually hear it right now you're not imagining things. He's learning a very fun instrument. It's been really exciting for me. So I'm gonna try and keep his music out of this video if I can. And I'm gonna show you guys today how we're going to do a seasonal clothes storage kind of swap over. So this is something that I've been doing the last few years. I'll take some things in my wardrobe and I'll separate them just so that I know when I'm going to my wardrobe Kind of the things that I'm looking at are things that I'm going to be using in this season or in this kind of coming weather. About a month ago, it was coat weather. Right now, I've got a long sleeve top on, but it's not necessarily jacket weather. So I'm not putting away all of my long sleeves and gearing up for a sweltering hot season. I'm still keeping some transitional seasons in my wardrobe, but I just wanted to show you guys how I do a seasonal swap over. And I wanted to share with you some tips that I've used over the years and tips that I tell my clients that I hope will help you guys when you're doing some seasonal storage for your own clothing. Ways that you can keep your clothing fresh to stop them from being damaged, to stop mildew from happening. And also just to ensure that when you come back to your clothes, when the weather changes completely again, that your clothes are still in really good shape. So the topics for today that we're going to run over, firstly is the worst ways you can store your clothing. That way you know exactly what not to do. And then next I'm going to talk you through the pre-storage process. So what I do in the lead up to putting my clothes away for a couple of months. And then I'm also going to talk through some products that I think might help you guys. Now this video isn't sponsored. All the products that I'll be talking about are products that I've actually used myself that I really enjoy using and that I've actually found work for me. So I hope this helps you. So we're going to start with the worst ways to store your clothing. These are things that can hurt your clothes whether you only store your clothes for like three months or can hurt your clothes if you store them for longer than three months so if you take anything from this video this first part about the worst ways to store your clothes this is the part I hope sticks with you so the first thing we're going to talk about is the dry cleaning bags so these plastic dry cleaning bags they actually can get a bit of moisture in them which will then grow a little bit of mold or mildew on your clothing so it's always a good idea that if you've gotten something back from the dry cleaners and you thought I'm gonna dry clean my coat so it's good for next season fabulous first step but get rid of that plastic bag and also take your garment off that wire hanger that they give you at the at the dry cleaners. Those hangers don't provide much support to your clothing but I've also seen in some cases where that kind of foamy thing that they put on the shoulders of the hanger, it's usually like a really thin coloured foam. That foam can sometimes leave a little bit of a residue on your clothing. I've seen situations where that foam has gotten wet and it's stuck to the clothing and it's left a little bit of discoloration on the clothing. First thing you can do is get rid of that dry cleaning bag and the dry cleaning hanger. Now the next thing is plastic storage tubs. And I know you guys have probably been told over time that plastic storage tubs are great for clothing, but having that plastic around your clothing can sometimes breed a little bit of moisture. If you do decide to use plastic storage tubs, what I recommend you do is you don't overstuff the storage tubs. Where I've seen this go so wrong for people is that they've put their clothes in a plastic storage tub, they've put too much in there, the lid hasn't been on properly and then they've gone and put it somewhere like in their garage or in their basement and it's come back covered in mold, it's got moths in it, it might have roaches in it, it could have a variety of different pests in it and your clothes end up smelling really musty and mildewy. So I would recommend if you're going to use storage boxes, make sure that you line those storage boxes with maybe a cotton of some sort. So whether you put your clothes in a cotton pillowcase or you separate your clothes into muslin bags, then that is a really good way to store. But I would not just put your clothes in a plastic storage container, not put the lid on properly, overstuff it and one other thing you want to make sure is that when you're storing your stuff if you're gonna store it in a plastic storage container that it is not in a damp environment so if your garage gets a lot of moisture in it don't store it in the garage now the next one is those vacuum storage bags that kind of suck all the air out of the bags and your clothes end up being like this high to being like this high those bags as popular as they've been and even though you can buy them in so many different storage places they're not very good for your clothes long term. And by long term, I mean really more than a month or two. 
Because these bags don't allow air to circulate around your clothing, particularly on things like cottons, wools, things like that, they don't allow your clothes to breathe. And what that can do is that can permanently dishape your garments and can permanently damage your garments. It'll make them feel a little bit different when you put them back on. So if you have your clothes in these vacuum sealable bags and you've had them stored in there for more than about a month or two, this can really be quite bad for your clothing. So I'd recommend you don't use the vacuum seal bags for your clothes. Now the next one is cardboard boxes. And the reason why you shouldn't use cardboard to store your clothing is because cockroaches love cardboard, but also if the cardboard gets wet, which it is very susceptible, it's a very kind of porous material. If it does get wet, you're going to get mold on your clothes a lot faster than if you used any of the previous ways to store your clothing. Now, something that happens a lot when it comes to shoe storage is putting your shoes away while they're still dirty or while they're still damp. If you have a pair of shoes that you want to put in storage that isn't going to be in your regular wardrobe, clean your shoes really well. Whether you take them to a cobbler so that they can clean them, you want to make sure that you have the sole nice and clean, particularly so that there's no mud, dirt, whatever on the bottom of your sole and you want to make sure that there's no kind of moisture or residue in your shoe that's going to make it a really good breeding ground for insects and things like silverfish and moths or other kind of creepy crawlies. A really good thing to do when you have your shoes that you want to put in storage is you just want to give them a super good clean over, let them air dry maybe for a day or two, make sure they're completely dry before you put them away and then put them in a little kind of canvas or a calico bag so that when you store them they're protected, they're not going to rub up against anything, they're not going to scuff on anything but you're also not worried about opening them up and finding that they've been eaten alive by whatever insects are going to come and get into your shoes. Now the next one is putting your clothing away in storage while it's still dirty. Now this often doesn't intentionally happen, like we wouldn't go and put a top that smells like body odor or a top that's got a food stain on it in storage because we know that those stains are going to set over time, they're also going to be a fabulous feasting ground for whatever creepy crawlies, mold or mildew that there is around. But the one thing that we don't tend to think about is if we've worn something maybe only once that season and we didn't wash it and we think oh it doesn't need to be washed. I think it's a really good idea just to wash whatever you're going to put in storage, whether it's a dry cleanable garment or a wool garment, something that's annoying or hard to clean, make sure you still wash it so that when you open up your storage pieces, you aren't disappointed with what you find. Now, if you want to find out how to wash wool garments at home and skip the dry cleaners, you can. I did a video a few weeks back on that and I'll leave that in the link below for you guys. Another good area to look is in your handbags. If you're going to be storing any handbags away for a long period of time, make sure you haven't left anything in there like chewing gum or makeup or lipstick or food wrappers that might have a little bit of food left on them still. Our handbags are pretty dirty things in general. They reach a lot of surfaces. They get touched by our hands when our hands are in all different states. So it's a good idea to clean out your handbag and give it a proper clean before you put it away. The other thing that you might want to do as well is stuff the bag. You can use some acid free tissue paper. You could use some cotton or some calico inside that bag just to keep it in its shape so it's not getting crushed when it's stored for a long period of time. If it's leather, when you store it, it's always good to store it in a dust bag so that it doesn't rub up against anything else and so that the leather can still breathe. Now let's talk about the pre-storage process. So now that you know the worst things you guys can possibly do, let's talk about what we actually need to do to start storing our clothes. So the first thing you wanna do is pull out anything that you know needs repairs, alterations. You might find that there's things in your wardrobe that just are time for them to be replaced, but you can replace those next season where the weather starts to change to the weather of the clothes that you're currently storing. So if your boots need replacing, get rid of the boots, write them on a list. That way you know what you're gonna be getting when the weather changes again. Now, if you find that you've got broken heels or you've got missing buttons or you've got hems that are falling down, put all those pieces together, clean them and take them to the tailor. Next, you want to clean your clothes. So everything that's going into storage should be nice and clean. Next, you just want to clean the space that your clothes are going into. So whether you have a separate wardrobe or you've got a drawer or you've got a basket of some sort that you're going to be putting your pieces in, make sure it's nice and clean. You might find you need to vacuum whatever surface you're putting them on. You might need to wipe them down. Just make sure that after you've cleaned it that you allow that surface to dry before you put your clothing in there. 
Now, there's a few different ways you can deal with storing your clothing. I know not everyone has ample storage space. I know for me here in Sydney, I need to store my clothes in a little bit of a different way. And you, if you have a spare wardrobe or you've got some space under your bed, you can use those methods. But what I personally do is I store my wools and my scarves and my softer things that need folding. I store those in cotton boxes and they're really good. Now, the other thing that I do, because some of my pieces are a bit too bulky to be storing folded up to be storing them under my bed I actually just separate my wardrobe so I go and I put everything that's wintry down one end of my wardrobe and everything that's not wintry down the other end of my wardrobe and that really allows me to see when I'm getting dressed what I'm going to be wearing that day or what's an available option to me. I also find that having my bulkier pieces up one end of my wardrobe and my not so bulky pieces down the other end, I'm not losing pieces amongst my garments. I'm not forgetting that I've got something just because I couldn't see it. Now, something that you're going to want to consider is whether or not you're going to fold or hang your clothing. So if you're going to be hanging your clothing, make sure that you do your clothing up on the hanger. It's not just sitting limp on the hanger. You also want to make sure that you're using decent hangers. Don't use those cardboard storage hanging boxes that they give you when you're moving houses put them in a nice cotton garment bag hang similar fabrics together so your cottons together if you've got maybe sequin garments or you've got delicate garments hang them together if you need to you can separate your garments with things like acid free tissue paper or individually put special items in garment bags just make sure your garment bags are made of a natural fabric that's breathable now if you want to keep your items hung up and you don't want to have them in garment bags you can hang them in a wardrobe do what I do and just just keep them down one end of your wardrobe. If you have things that need to be folded, like knitwear, t-shirts, you might have things like jeans, you might even have things like scarves or hats, I would recommend that you fold them. You might wanna use some acid-free tissue paper with those. Now, what about products that actually help you keep your clothes nice while they're in storage? So one thing that I like to put in my storage, whether it's even in my drawers, this could just be my sock drawer, or it can be in my knits when I'm packing them away for a few months. I like to use lavender pouches, and these aren't just there to make your clothes smell nice. They actually help to get rid of moths and prevent moths from coming into your clothing. They hate lavender. We love lavender. So I actually use the Sagittine ones, and this is a company which I'll link down below. I think they're an Australian run company and the stuff is really good. I've actually had this for quite a while now and it still smells really lovely. So these are really good. I've got a few of these and they work perfectly. Next is acid-free tissue paper. So when you're folding up your garments and you're storing them away, acid-free tissue paper is the best type of tissue paper you can use to keep your garments and your scarves and things from discoloring. That's what the acid-free tissue paper generally does. This is the type of thing that they use when they're archiving clothing at museums to keep clothes from disshaping and discoloring. Now, if you've got something that's really delicate, say you're storing a hat, you might actually wanna stuff the hat with acid-free tissue paper and then gently wrap the hat with acid-free tissue paper. You'll find that when you get your garment back out of storage that it won't have discolored and hopefully it won't have to shape too much if you actually pad it a little bit using these types of things. Next is cedar. Now, cedar is really good for keeping pests away from your clothing. Now, there are a few things that you need to be aware of with cedar. The main thing is that if you store it with leather, it can actually dry out the leather just a little bit. So it's always a good idea not to store cedar with your leather pieces for a long period of time, particularly if your pieces aren't getting any kind of use or you're not really going to be checking up on your pieces. Now cedar is really good for using them with things like cottons, silks, um, just your regular fabric. So if you're storing things like a coat away, cedar is fantastic for that. I sometimes like to put them in like the pockets of my coats and it not only smells actually quite nice but it does keep all those pests away from your clothes. Now lastly is a moisture absorber and I tend to use the damp red ones. You can use the regular damp red ones but you can also get a deodorizing one. So if you have a cupboard that you might store shoes in that starts to smell a little bit musty or it smells a bit like sweaty shoes, those work really well to kind of keep that smell away from your wardrobe, but it also sucks up any excess moisture. So it's gonna hopefully prevent things like mold building up in your wardrobe, particularly if you live in an older building. I know for me, the building that I live in was built in the 70s and it's quite concrete. It gets pretty cold in winter and you know, sometimes there's some damp issues happening. So it's always a good idea to use these types of products. And I actually use these in every compartment of my wardrobe to keep moisture away from my wardrobe. You might find that if you're gonna be 
storing your pieces for longer than a season, say if you're going to be storing them for six months or so, that you might actually have to change these products over or use more of them. I find for me, I tend to need to change mine roughly every six months. All right, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you liked this video, please remember to like and please remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And let me know in the comments below what you do when it comes to seasonal storage or if you are looking for some more videos on keeping your wardrobe neat and tidy um, or any kind of wardrobe related videos, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you want to do a bit more of a declutter on your wardrobe, I actually did a video a few weeks back that'll help you do a bit of a de-stress and a declutter at the same time. And I hope that helps you guys. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Sunday next week with another video.